What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick 10. Today we're working on a 2000 Crestliner 1754. Now, this customer is an avid duck hunter. If you can't tell, he's got a gigantic blind on the entire boat. Whole boat's camoed out. He does a lot of duck hunting out of this thing. So with that being said, he's got two big motors on the back of his boat and he wants me to install some pods on the back of the transom because he thinks that it's going to help with his weight distribution and his flotation and buoyancy on the back of the boat Honestly, the thing looks like it's sitting in a pretty good spot. You can see the water line right here. I mean, that's about eight inches below where the transom drops down in the middle. It looks pretty good, but he's got this big Yamaha 50 horsepower two-stroke outboard on here. It is offset. He's got a jack plate on here. I'm not familiar with this one. This is the Z-Lock, but it's a pretty cool looking jack plate. And right next to that, we've got a big long tailed mud motor. Now this thing is pretty cool. It's literally just bolted up on the transom with a big piece of wood and it's kind of cumbersome. But I guess if you got to get around in some of those muddy areas to go duck hunting, this thing is very important. This motor is actually a Predator 212, which is a very common motor. They sell these things at Harbor Freight. This is the exact same motor that's on my kids' go-karts. And I'm actually in the process of trying to figure out how to get some more horsepower, get some more speed out of these things. I've been doing some research on them and it looks like this thing's stock. But I do know that you can take some of these pieces off right here and this is like the governor and you can just reattach your cables directly to this other piece in here and do away with some of these components and it will definitely make this thing a lot faster very quick and instantly without buying any parts the only issue is if you're going to do that the flywheel is inside of this motor is not meant to handle those high rpms and if you're going to do that for a long period of time with the wide open throttle you're probably going to end up having to upgrade that flywheel because it's just not going to hold up this motor only costs about 200 bucks, but you could easily spend $1,500 or two grand fixing this thing up, trying to get some more top end and horsepower out of it. But anyways, that's a story for another day. Today, we are going to be putting these pods on here. He did purchase some pods from Beaver Tail Pods. Now, he's got what looks like to be the medium ones. It might be large, I'm not sure. I have to look at the paperwork, but these things are nicely constructed. They're not fun to weld on, I'm not gonna lie to you. It's not gonna be fun, especially considering that this boat is 23 years old and this transom is already kind of flimsy and it's got wood behind it. Now look, this piece right here is sucked up in there pretty good. So transom in here is obviously 23 years old. It's not new. It's gonna be a little bit of pain in the butt. I'm just hoping that the back side of that aluminum isn't too dirty and I'm hoping that this is thick enough that I'm not gonna melt through because I start doing that it's really going to cause a pain in the butt i'm not looking forward to that i'm hoping i can just knock this thing out and get a good install it is a little bit wavy in here though I mean, it's kind of hard to see it on the camera but you can see it, it's wavy got a little bit of a roll right here and that's right where it's going to be going for this pod so it's going to be a little bit of a difficult install but we'll see what happens see that I'm going to have to figure out if there's a way I can suck that up there and get that tight enough to TIG weld it. I might do some MIG welding on this. My MIG welder hasn't been used in a while, so I'm hoping I can just TIG weld this thing. Anyways, I'm going to get this whole area cleaned up across this whole back and get ready to install this pot on here. I'm going to get both of them tacked on, square them up, make sure they're sitting just right before I make them permanent. I also got a couple of holes I need to fill right here. He has some type of little anchor system he had in here that... It got blown off last time he was out and I'm probably going to end up putting some little pipes on the inside of these two pods. That way he can run like a broomstick or some type of anchor through them when he's in the shallow water. So he's pretty much going to be sitting in the mud the entire time he's out there. And I might even throw one up on the front just so he has some anchor points to stick some rods down into the mud and keep him where he's at while he's hunting. We got a lot to do guys and these pods are not going to weld themselves on. Let's get back to work.
All right, so we got the transom cleaned up for the pods. These are the holes I got to fill up here. On the other side, we had to cut the transducer puck off that I put on here a couple years ago. Got that cleaned up, but we did find a couple of little hidden gems in here. We've got a hole here and here, and there's another hole up here. So I'm gonna have to drill these out. He's got like some 5200 or some type of JB weld in there. Drill those out, I'm gonna fill those holes in here and fill the ones in on the other side. Then we'll get these pods up here and tack them on. Let's get back to work. All right, so we got them tacked on. Check it out, you see what we got here? I took this piece of inch and a half square tubing. I just ran that across both the bottom of the pods and then I clamped it to them. That way we can keep these pods in line with each other and they'll be perfectly straight across both pods. Then what I did was I took my ratchet strap, obviously, ratchet strapped them up to hold them in place. Same thing over here. This one's just up underneath the clamp holding it. But the issue that it's going to run into with this one for sure is the transom is a little bit different than some of the other boats that I've welded these on. I think just because it's an older crest liner, it's a V hole. You can see how it comes down, you know, deeper in the center here. It's definitely got a V on it. Most of the boats that I've welded these pods on in the past have been flat bottom John boats, which, you know, made it a little bit easier as far as lining this up with the bottom of the boat. So what I've got is about, I don't know a half inch maybe of this sitting up on top of the bottom. And I actually just talked to the people at Beaver Tail. They said, that's fine. What you gotta do though with these pods, this back edge right here, it's supposed to be a half inch difference if you run your straight edge up underneath the bottom of the transom. I'm gonna do that in just a minute. And what we're gonna have to have is one inch because we're already starting out at a half inch there. So we're gonna have one inch here. Once I run this straight edge, flush up against the bottom of the hole, then we're gonna have one inch gap right here. That's probably gonna mean that I'm gonna have to pull this out. And I'm gonna have to add some pieces in there. You can see it's already got a tremendous gap in there. It's gonna be fun to try to weld that anyways. But once we pull this down a little bit where it's gonna need to be, more than likely I'm gonna have to take some strips and run them across here and on the side just to have a way to close that gap up and weld it up. But now that I got both of these tacked on, I'm gonna go ahead and start welding the bottom side because the bottom is not gonna change. I'm gonna try to get two or three good tacks on the bottom and that will allow me a point where I can hinge it you know, up or down to get my correct measurement for the outside of this pod. Let's get back to work.
got both these pods tacked on. You can see how to add this strip of metal in the back. On the side, I'm also going to have to add it up inside of here. I don't know how the hell I'm going to weld that. There's no room to even get up in there. I'm going to do the best I can, but you can see what I did with this top strip. I had to like grind it so it kind of fits and parents I'm still wanting to suck away from me. That's how they tell you to do it in the instructions though. You see here, gap between pod and transom. Well, obviously we had a pretty good gap on the side right here. So I add this piece in here, which is what they're telling you to do right here. Now this sucks because this adds twice as much welding. Instead of having one seam, just welding the pod to the transom, now you have a seam on the pod and a seam on the transom. And you know, it's important though, because you gotta keep with this straight edge across the bottom of the hole, this gap right here, or else the boat will not drive right. It'll porpoise. So in order to make that happen, we had to add these stupid pieces right here. And I'm gonna send them some pictures of my wells. My God, these look like hammered dog shit. Anyways, uh, this is not gonna be fun. This is gonna be a lot harder than I was originally anticipating it to be, but we're gonna get this thing welded up, guys. Let's get back to work. So the pods are welded on, the welds look good. You see, it's not my first time. I've done this a lot. The only thing I had issues with was this side over here. And it's because once I got up to this point, I couldn't keep going with my right hand. So I had to weld this backwards with my left hand. That weld's not as pretty as the rest of them, but still better than the ones that were in the instruction book. This side turned out good too. Nice welds. Same thing down the outside. Check out these overhead welds on the bottom though. These are really nice looking. Turned out really good. Now I have another little piece that I'm gonna try to put up in this area inside of here because there is a gap in there. You can see it on that side, see that gap? Well, I really can't get in there and weld anything up here. I'm gonna try to put a piece on here, close this up and weld what I can down here. I'm probably end up leaving this hole open in the bottom in case water does get in there. It'll have somewhere to get out. But I'm also going to cut some pieces of pipe, <clears throat> kind of like this thing he has right here. He had this mounted onto the back. Those are the holes I filled in that was up here. But I'm basically going to take something just like this, and I'm going to mount it up in here. That'll give him somewhere to put a, a pole to anchor himself up in the mud. Put one on either side, and I'm going to add one up front. Uh, I'm going to go get those made, and we'll get them installed on the boat. Let's get back to work. All right, she's all done. I did weld another plate up on this corner on the inside here. You see that? I couldn't get it welded all the way up in there. There's no way I could fit in there. If he wants to take this off and bring it back, I'll gladly weld it. But I did add these pieces on. It's got an angle on both sides. And that's basically just for him to be able to put a broomstick or one of those micro anchor power poles in there or something. I put one on both sides. Turned out good. Pods look we'll see how they perform on the water I did also put another piece up on the front this piece right here this is basically just the same the back you put a micro anchor pole in there I weld it solid all the way around this thing and it's pretty sturdy I mean I think that'll work for them 
I'll give him three attachment points. All right, so he did call me and told me he had one more crack up on this long tail mud motor. So I went ahead and cleaned that up and welded that for him. Wasn't a big deal, but I needed to make sure this thing was right for him. These pods turned out pretty good. I mean, all in all, we're really not going to know until we take it out on the water. I did want to open up this blind though and see what it looks like. All right, so we got it all opened up. This thing is pretty cool, man. I must admit, it completely covers the boat. It only took me about 10 minutes to open this thing up. Definitely camos the whole boat. I mean, if I was a duck, I don't think I'd be smart enough to know this was a boat. Ducks got little heads, though. They, their brains can only be but so big. I mean, duck heads, they're not very big. So I think you can fool a duck with this. Now, obviously, I didn't cover up the motor and everything, but if he really wanted to set this thing up, this has got plenty of slack in here. He could cover up the whole motor with it. Cool little setup, though. Let's hop up inside there and see what the inside looks like. All right, we're inside of the duck blind boat. It's pretty cool. Pretty neat, for sure. I'm going to turn this camera around and show you guys this thing. It's definitely different. This thing is sick, though. I guess you just pop up and bang, bang. Shoot your ducks. Pretty cool little pop-up though. I did notice something else. Check this out. Obviously this guy does a lot of woodwork. Look at that. It's got three seats in there. Now that is pretty cool. And it just flips right up. You flip it back down and it makes a deck across this back area right here. Definitely a pretty cool little upgrade. I was wondering what that was. I saw the edge of that camo. And I looked underneath there and realized that he's got seats in there. At first I thought it was just one big bench seat, but these are actually pretty nice seats. I guess you definitely need a nice comfortable seat if you're going to be out there waiting on the ducks. So pretty cool idea. He's got a decent amount of room in here. He's got a bunch of storage for his decoys and stuff up there. I'm going to hide in here for a little while, take a nap. Guys. All right, guys, it's a wrap for this project. We got the pods on. There's a little bit of a pain in the butt to weld them on, but, you know, it's all in a day's work. This boat's pretty cool, though. Blind's pretty neat. I've never been hunting a day in my life, but it looks pretty cool to me. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like, subscribe button, leave a comment. Let me know if you guys want any merch. You can check that out on trick I'll see you guys next time. I got to get back to work.